Okay, we're going to start again. So Matthijs shared the results with you just now, and we did some benchmarking. So you saw how we're doing, we can compare ourselves, but now let's go more in depth. So the first case study of tonight is by Anne Bebe, Sanne and Chloe, the UX and visual managers of their design system, Poncho, will share the journey they had in creating their design systems and what they learned along the way. So give a warm applause for Sanne and Chloe. Everybody, uh, we're very excited to be here. Um, thank you, Angie Studio, for inviting us. Uh, we will take you on the journey of Poncho, the ABB design system. So, my name is Sonne Kloot. Um, I'm a UX designer at ABB. Uh, Chloe and I work together in the design system team. And the ABB is a very large known organization in our, our society. We are already like 135 years yeah. existed. existed yeah. Um, and we're all, uh, we're working together on products and services with 4,000 colleagues, and products and services like uh, the roadside assistance, insurances, um, leisure and vacations, and a lot, of, lot more. Um, uh, you can imagine that a lot of people are working together at uh, for these products and services. Uh, we already are 30 developers, 17 UX designers, two UX researchers, and one head of UX and also one visual designer. Yes, that's me, I'm Chloe. And I'm gonna take you to the beginning of our journey. So, uh, about two years ago, uh, Anne de Bay had no single source of truth when it came to design. And that became a big challenge to work with all the different teams. And, um, yes, b because of that you had a lot of discussions and a lot of inconsistency. and. But on the, on the other hand, the developers already set up a um, front-end uh, component library in Storybook, but there wasn't a connection between development and design. So, and also there wasn't something for the whole organization yet. Uh, first, we start ana uh, started analyzing the current state. So we looked at the tooling and the workflow. We conducted a survey with all the UX designers um, and ask questions like what tools do you use at the moment and uh, how do you collaborate with all the developers and with whom do you check your final designs. Uh, then we looked at the process and uh, did the inventory. So we had this huge brown paper in the middle of the office where we uh, created an over overview of all the components and all the elements. And there we just uh, organized and structured it and uh, looked also at the naming. And because this was in the middle of the office, it, it became very visible. So a lot of people came and got engaged, asked questions. And that's also when the IT board became interested. Yes, so uh, first we started testing uh, some tools. So we, we know already from the survey that uh, Chloe co conducted that we saw that many designers were working with Sketch. Um, and at that time, uh, still only DSM was synchronizing with, um, with Sketch. So we decided to, uh, what we, we had a lot of things on Confluence, um, yeah, other documentation from Photoshop files, uh, a little bit of Sketch also. Um, everywhere there were rationals. So we put everything together um, in Sketch and DSM. So Sketch consisted mainly out of the Sketch symbols and DSM uh, was there for the uh, directionals. Um, and we noticed with putting everything together in Sketch and DSM that there were a lot of inconsistencies and we already noticed that uh, rationals weren't clear and we saw, yeah, we noticed that we, we needed some more um, than only tooling to help us out. So over time UX designers were already using Sketch um, and also the front-end developers were already having a component library, uh, as uh, Chloe said, and they are using Storybook, uh, they work with Preact, uh, but still the bridge was missing between all those tools. So we decided to talk with uh, the front-end lead and other developers to, to find out how we could work together, and we qu quickly came to the one thing we see all, uh, is that, there, that was missing a, uh, there was missing a process. 
So we decided quickly that we should design a process and to create a bridge between all the two links. And eventually this became on show. Yes, we've noticed that it's very important to give your design system a name. So we first started with the ANBB design system, so it was like a process name. But people couldn't really relate to it or remember it, so that's why we came up with Poncho. But why Poncho? Because, yeah, Poncho, we gave Poncho the qualities of being protected, transparent, accessible and also transferable. And the Labr Labrador dog uh, symbolizes that it's your friend, it's loyal, and it will also guide you, guide you through this system. Uh, it, it matches the core qualities and values of the Ababe, so therefore it's a perfect fit for Ababe design system. And also, Poncho is a product that we sell, so it's also a, a fit in that way. Uh, but then we were talking about, um, okay, we have the tooling, we have the branding, we have the name, but we don't have the process. So we came up with this process um, for a designer to uh, add a new component in our system. Uh, we first create a design proposal. Uh, we use Trello for this, so you can uh, make your own card, re request card in Trello, and there you put in your proposal. And then you can do the desk field research or find data or even benchmark. And all this information you also put in this card. Um, when you've learned and you've iterated, you have a definite proposal with all the rationals of how does this component work and what's the purpose of it. Then the developers can build it uh, in Storybook and we at the same time will add it as a component uh, in Sketch Library for UX designers to use it. Uh, also, we're synchronizing it to the DSM design system uh, manager of InVision, and there we put in also the rationals of how it works, what it is, etc. And then, also important, the show and tell that uh, in every chapter, the development chapter, um, UX chapter, and then the component is born and ready to use. Yeah, so in the beginning we didn't know if a design system could even fix our problems. So what we did was we read a lot of articles and books and we looked at other comp uh, uh, organizations like IBM, Atlassian and Trello. And we, we learned um, a lot from them. And we learned that, not, that we don't have to reinvent the wheel again. So this saves a lot of cost and time and you can also put all the time and cost into more doing more research. So you have a lot of questions about the user or problems that you're seeing or opportunities and you can put all that time and cost in the user, so why not do that? It's also very handy for rapid validation. You have all the components and elements in the design system, so new teams or products can easily um, use all those components to build um, uh, a product or service and have a much faster time to market. What we see also is, a, and is also a problem with us is the silos. Um, I think you will recognize this. Uh, people are working together in a product or a service team and they're fully focused on uh, what they are doing and they're missing the collaboration between tools and departments. So um, we noticed with the design system um, that teams will work more together and eventually this will create an ecosystem of continuity, improvements and validation. So you were wondering, how do I get support? Um, so it's very important to tell her why. Uh, we as UX designers always ask why. So <laughs> we have to tell them why. And we have to show them the values. Just for example, Chloe told us about the design system wall. It was very important to show the organization that we are seeing these problems. So showing them that, our, that there was a lot of inconsistencies like uh, overused buttons, uh, for example. Um, they told us, oh, yeah, I see the problem now. Hmm. Maybe you can, yeah, you can go further with the solutions. So make the future problems also clear. So what if we don't have a design system? What will be the future then? So what problems will uh, we'll be seeing? Um, and third, give them insights in the investment and the outcome. So they have to invest in something. Maybe a design system teams, more developers, more designers, or even other colleagues. Um, but they also have 
uh, you have to add some tools or process and this, this takes time. So you have to tell them why they should invest and also tell them what the outcome will be and the outcome um, they would like to see in money, of course. <coughs> so create awareness in uh, the organization by showing and doing. So what we did was a lot of presentations. Uh, Chloe will show you uh, later on in the presentation. It's so very important to show them and show them what they're doing. So get a quick talk with your manager or other designers in front of the teams to create awareness. And uh, people um, would like to think with you or create with you. So invite them to sessions to collaborate um, for the design systems. We do this, this with the Poncho days and we uh, invite UX designers to think with us and also the developers are doing this also with a front end Poncho day. So this is, this is very helpful. And keep them informed. Uh, you have very important stakeholders in the organization, a lot with the design system. So keep them informed with FIIs. Uh, or when people would like to speak face to face, just do that because they're very important for your process and for the adoption in the organization. So in the end, this resulted for us in, in Poncho becoming part of IT and the customer experience strategy. So the ingredients to su success for us was getting it out there, giving presentations in the organization, but also giving presentations in other organizations and talk about it. Uh, also approaching it from all angles is important because then people can't deny that there isn't a design system. Uh, what Sana just quickly told about the Poncho Days is uh, organ organize and facilitate <laughs> moments by designers to for designers so that they can build and discuss and centralize their uh, discussions about new components. And also uh, have a dedicated design system and I'll t tell you later why we think that's important. Uh, here you see an uh, example of uh, us presenting in the organization uh, with the goal to share the mission, the values and the purpose of why the design system is so important. Uh, the effect here was that people were now talking about it, Poncho was a thing, and asking questions about it, and also finding out how they could collaborate. Uh, then we uh, had an article featured in our employee magazine, Blick, and this created like more awareness in the whole organization, so a wider audience, and uh, this also uh, had the effect that people now were informed, and it, it created recognition, so there were now faces behind Poncho. For uh, the UX designers, uh, we create uh, a monthly uh, Poncho Day where we uh, all work together on new components. But we also have like fun days where we just zoom in in parts of the process. For example, this is Poncho Bug Day. And here uh, the task was for all the participants to uh, find and report as many bugs or inconsistencies as they could find. And uh, by doing this, you could really see the urgency of uh, that consistency is important. And the effect uh, was that uh, at the end of oh, a few hours, the end of the day, uh, we had more than 100 inconsistencies bugs found and uh, a winning team that had the star bugs coffee set. So that really worked out uh, great. <laughs> uh, we also had a Poncho speed testing day. Uh, here we motivated colleagues to test and research in a more accessible way because we yeah, we hear the argument of, about designers telling, oh, we don't have the time to test or we don't have the money. But here we organized the day with uh, a few respondents and uh, the effect was that they could really test quickly and have valuable insights to finalize their designs the same day. So, so what did we learn? Um, I think to, do, to be successful, you need the following. So you need shared goals. Shared goals um, means that people will um, look at, at, at what you're doing at the same level. So from um, in our organization, the goal, high objective was becoming one, more one of our bebe. And that means that the design system will fulfill that goal. So it helps to create an objective uh, in the organization to, um, to connect the design system with. So Everybody see that the design system is fulfilling that. 
So as for support, uh, we already told in the presentation that it's very important to ask everybody for support that can help you. So what we do with the poncho days, but also uh, we do design critique with the team and ask them about what do you, what do you think about the design system, how is it working for you, uh, what are things that we have to do um, uh, for you to uh, design and develop better. Uh, so that's very important. And also I said they're from other organizations, so they have a story and the story is very important to to learn and look what you can take away from it to uh, iterate in your own organization. Um, they're doing a lot longer than we are, so they're very successful, so why not uh, look at them and take away what you can. So in last, uh, make iteration and learn, learn by doing. Um, we just started, so in the survey that uh, Matthijs already showed, just do it, It's re it really worked. Um, we're just, uh, we started with one version and we just created uh, everything around it and everything became more clear and it became more of a process and something for the whole organization. It takes a while but it's, <laughs> it's worth it. Yes, so where are we now? Um, we're, sti we're still busy analyzing the process and tooling, so it's important to grow, so we need to iterate as Sana just told. And um, yeah, we're also looking at uh, the integration or collaboration with the rest of the departments, because uh, IG Studios just uh, told uh, us that a lot of um, design systems are, aren't complete yet with all the other aspects. And I think that's important because then it's more complete and then also useful for the whole organization. And then also a design system team. We're uh, glad to say that we now for a month ha have a design system, dedicated design system team. First we did, did, uh, did all the design system work next to our uh, own job. So uh, now we can really um, take it serious with the whole company and uh, let the company see that we value this and take time uh, can take the time to really do all the deep work, explore the right answers, and uh, yeah, looking at trends and keeping it up to date. Uh, next steps for us are, uh, well, letting the, the design system grow with more parts, uh, the templates, the patterns, content, all the content components and the guidelines. And also the branding, branding aspect is uh, interesting because now all the branding uh, aspects lies with all the branding marketeers and they should update it on a regular basis but we don't have the connection right now so we're looking at that at the moment and also for apps we have all the the components how they should look like but because apps app development has a different workflow it's now it's not the same as how we work for web so that's now a challenge for us to uh, look at how we could yeah integrate apps in our design system uh, as you might have noticed, a design system isn't perfect or is never finished. Uh, this was just an example of our journey and uh, we hope we've inspired you on your uh, design system journey. So uh, thank you.